You know, today we're going to talk about depression and anxiety. What did I prophesy? We're in a season of deliverance. Amen. Amen. We're in a season of deliverance. So listen to me, uh, afternoon service. Don't be surprised when God begins to deal with you on some things. Don't be surprised when he puts his finger on something that you did not even know was there. Don't be surprised. Because we are in a season of deliverance. And if you're sitting under this ministry, let me just prophesy, there is another level of breakthrough coming into your life. Amen? There's more freedom coming into your life because there is an anointing here in this season to break the yoke. And some of you may not even know that there's a yoke over your neck that needs broken. You might not know it because we just don't know. We don't know what we don't know. But if you, if you begin to cooperate with the grace of God and you begin to, when he puts his finger on a thing or whispers to your heart, your heart about something, if you'll get into agreement with him, guess what? He'll break the yoke. Amen. He'll do it here or he'll do it while you sleep or he'll do it whenever he wants to do it, but he'll do it. Somebody say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Amen. He'll do it. So we're going to talk about this topic today because it is pervasive. It's pervasive, and the church does not talk about it enough. It seems as if it's taboo in the church. It seems as if we want to talk all about prosperity, but we don't deal with the plagues of our soul. And we must not put a stigma on depression and anxiety in the church. Somebody say amen. 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 We have to stop putting a stigma on these things. You know how many Christians? Christians. Christians. People who love the Lord are not only struggling with depression, but are committing suicide. Pastors, people, pastors, pastors' children committing suicide. Why? Because there's a devil on the loose, and he's come to kill, he's come to steal, and he's come to destroy, and one way he does that is through depression and anxiety. And I'm telling you, these two things run together. They're not the same, but they share some of the same characteristics. And anxiety will lead you into depression if you don't quench it soon enough. We've got to deal with these things. Somebody say, deal with it. it. We got to deal with it. Maybe you are not depressed, but studies show that every person who's alive will at some point in their life walk through a bout of depression, either mild or just some kind of deep sadness. Maybe it's associated with grief or loss of someone that you love, but people will walk through depression and you need to recognize it for what it is. And then you need to deal with it. Amen. You got to deal with it because what you don't deal with, the devil will use to deal with you. Let me say that again. I said, what you don't deal with, the devil will use use to deal with you. He'll use that hurt and wound that did not get healed to make more hurt and more wound in your life. You got to deal with it. It's time to deal with it. Somebody say it's time to deal with it. We don't deal with these issues because Christians after all are not supposed to be depressed because the religious system looks down upon you if you're anxious. Oh, well, bless the Lord. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. I know what the Bible says. The Bible says a lot of things. And guess what? Many of us miss the mark every day in one manner or another. And so we must press into understanding what this is and how to defeat it. And it's not always easy. It's not always easy, but it can be done. People don't speak out because they're embarrassed because they're ashamed. We got to take the shame off of the mental health issues. You know, you are a spirit. And your spirit's not depressed, believe me. Your spirit is not anxious, but you have a soul, and that's the problem. Because your spirit got saved, it's being renewed day by day, it's it's getting stronger all the time as you put the word in it. But your soul is being saved. Your soul has issues. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, you got issues. I didn't quite expect that reaction. You seem to like to tell everybody else they have issues. But the Lord is saying we have issues. We all have issues. Amen. (laughs) It's easy to see somebody else's issues, isn't it? It's easy. They walk in the church, you're like, "Mm mm-hmm. Yeah, mm mm-hmm. But the Lord looks at us and says, "Mm mm-hmm. Yeah, Uh uh-huh. The truth is, is that we all have issues. Amen. And you might not be depressed and you might not be anxious, but maybe somebody in your family is, maybe your friend is, and we need to learn how to minister to them as well. 
And this is a safeguard. This is a uh, prophylactic. This is a, a pre, a pre, what do they call it? preventative medicine here today. 10% of Americans are depressed. That's a lot. Depression is the number two problem in the Western world. Number two. Number two. Heart attacks is the first. Depression is the second. That's how pervasive it is. 20% of Americans have anxiety disorders. Listen, ladies, 25% of women experience severe depression in their lifetime. That's a big number. 41% of depressed women are ashamed to seek help. 15% of depressed people will commit suicide. Christians aren't immune. And God knows this all too well. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, verse 25, anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Anxiety in the heart of man brings depression. If you don't deal with the anxiety, the depression will follow. So if these two run hand in hand, which is why we're talking both about them together, we got to deal with it. Studies show that churches help survivors of suicide because the end result of depression left unfettered, it's not always suicide, but oftentimes it is. If they don't actually kill themselves, they give up on their dreams. You know, the people who are living under a bridge, it's not because they lost their job, it's because they lost their hope. It's because they lost their dream. Because you could get another job, except you were so broken by the defeat. And they got depressed. So we gotta deal with it, we gotta deal with it. Somebody say, it's gotta change. You know, in the Word of Faith movement, I love that movement. I, I went to Rama Bible School. I love the Word of Faith movement. But in that movement, some churches have gone to such an extreme that you can't be anything but joyous and prosperous or you're condemned. Well, what's wrong with you? You don't have faith? And I hate that. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just going through a hard time. Amen? And everybody goes through hard times. I went through a hard time when I was in my 20s. In my early 20s, uh, I, I, I contracted. I don't have it anymore, praise God. But I had high blood pressure for no reason. I was healthy. I was young. I was thin. And I went to the doctor because I, I was working for Universal Studios. I was interning in their publicity department. And I was there, uh, and I just... I guess the pressure must have been overwhelming me and my blood pressure shot up and the doctor said, it's actually the root of this is anxiety. And I'm like, I've never been anxious in my life like that. And, and, and so I kind of agreed. So he put me on anxiety medication. Now, if I, were, if I would say now, most people can do without that. We just have to learn how to cast her. I do believe there are some issues that do require pharmaceuticals. But I think a lot of this, especially for Christians, I think we need to get delivered to the demon or I think we can change the way that we think. And I was there, you know, in my 20s, and I got, I got so depressed that I ended up in bed for a year. I watched the entire O.J. Simpson trial. I didn't get up. I didn't go anywhere. This was in the early 90s, what, 93? And I was just, I didn't care. I was hopeless. I was depressed. I was dejected. I was despondent. I didn't care. I didn't care. I just didn't care. I barely ate. All I did was watch TV. That was all I did in my early 20s, and depression, it just came on me, anxiety came upon me, and it drove me into depression because I didn't know how to deal with it, I didn't have the skills, I didn't know how to cope with it. And so today I want to teach you how to cope with these things, but I want you to see them for what they are, because anxiety and depression, there are symptoms, and it can be kind of obscure because it can be a symptom for a lot of things. But if you're experiencing some of these symptoms, you have to stop and ask the Lord, is this a thought pattern, is this a mental stronghold, or is this a demonic stronghold? Because when you can't help something, no matter how hard you try, many times it's a demon. I know this is not Sunday morning talk. That's why we're talking about this on su Sunday afternoon. I didn't say some of these things in the, in the first service. Those of you who were here know that. Because it's Sunday afternoon, people, you're a little more free, praise God. <laughs> Don't tell the first service people I said that, okay? Amen. We have a lot of visitors in the, in the, in the first service. And so they, sometimes they just, they've never heard anything like that. So we just kind of try to ease them into it, you know. <laughs> but sometimes when you can't stop doing something, you cannot stop, you can't break out of that depression. You just can't. You, you want to, you know you're not living right. You know that you're not doing anything for the Lord. You can't, you just can't, you just can't. Sometimes that means that you need deliverance. But here's some symptoms of anxiety before we get into how to break free. Let's say it what it is. It's, it, it takes common nervousness a few steps up. It's an abnormal and overwhelming sense of apprehension and fear. And it's often marked by physical signs.
We live in a digital era in which we can have friends all over the globe. Yet true, deep, personal connections are hard to come by in a busy world. And finding a church that offers prophetic revelation and practical keys to overcome the enemy's plans for your life can be difficult in a seeker-friendly church world. Enter ahop.online, an outreach of Awakening House of Prayer. We're a global community of believers passionately pursuing God's presence. We're a prophetic church where the Holy Spirit moves. We empower you to live a supernatural breakthrough lifestyle. Get connected and make true connections in the Awakening House of Prayer global family. If you can't come to our church in Florida, come to our church online. Fatigue, it's difficulty concentrating, irritability, tense muscles, trouble falling, trouble staying asleep, panic attacks, avoiding social situations, irrational fears. You know, we all have to deal with fear. You can get delivered to fear and still have to deal with fear. But there are certain things that are irrational. And when they're irrational, there's either a stronghold in, in your soul somewhere, you're believing a lie, or you've got a demon that needs to get dealt with when you can't break through it. Depression, there's some similar uh, characteristics here. It, it, it includes many times anxiety, apathy, discontent, guiltiness, being hopeless, loss of interest, loss of interest in pleasurable activities, mood swings, sadness, excessive crying, uh, excessive hunger, lack of concentration, poor appetite. And so, again, some of these things are, uh, do require uh, medication. I, I'm not against that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not condemning anybody for taking it. But I do think God has a better way because I think even with chemical imbalances, God wants to heal that too. Amen? He does want to heal it. So if you're taking anti-anxiety or antidepressants, I'm not against that at all. Sometimes that's how you can get stable enough in order to fight the bigger issue. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. So let's talk, you know, how, how many of you heard of Dr. Caroline Leaf? Amen. She's been on Joyce Meyer's broadcast a lot. She's a doctor and she studies the brain and how our thoughts and our words affect our brain chemistry and our brain patterns. And she'll do a scan of someone who's like very, very depressed or very, very anxious. And you'll see all these black spots on their brain. And then, you know, she'll teach them how to think right, how to talk right, how to eat right, how to do the things medically. Because, you know, we're, we have a body. We're a spirit, soul, and body. Our body can affect our emotions. What's going on? How many of you know when you're in pain, you do get a little irritable sometimes, don't you? Yes. Well, you know, when you've when you're, when you got pain, sometimes your, your tolerance for people acting foolish is... Eh. But she, she, she would do the brain scan... And, 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 and there would be all these black parts where it was, you know, where there was depression or anxiety or, or whatever it was. And then she would teach them and she'd go back and scan their brain again. And it's all bright and shiny and red and everything's popping and jumping. The brain was actually, the, the synapses and the grooves in the brain were actually renewed. They were actually renewed. Amen. That's why the Bible says, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the entire renewal of your mind. Your mind actually does, your brain actually does have the ability to renew itself, creating new pathways. It's amazing. God created it that way. Amen. Caroline Leaf said this. She says, you cannot sit back and wait to be happy and healthy and have a great thought life. You have to make the choice to make this happen. You've got to choose to get rid of the toxic thoughts and get back in alignment with God. You can be overwhelmed by every small setback in your life, or you can be energized by the possibilities they bring. Amen. And so we have to understand that if we are not careful with our thoughts, this is where it starts. The enemy will interject the thought. And if we don't cast it down, if we don't deal with it, it'll deal with us and we'll, be, we'll attract demons. See, anything you do, the, there, there's works of the flesh. Galatians talks about the works of the flesh and the works of the spirit. You can do a work of the flesh long enough and you'll attract a demonic presence because demons love sin. So if you're practicing the flesh, the demons love the flesh. The demons want to eat up your flesh. They want to make you sick and, and, and tired. They want to bring oppression to you. And so we have to understand that we're attracting demons to come make their home in us when we don't do what the Bible says. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he becomes. We will always move toward what we focus on. We will always become like what we think about. 
And so I'm going to tell you some practical ways, very practical. I want to get real practical. And if, if this is not for you today, believe me, you'll need to minister to somebody else with this information. And believe me, there will come a time in your life where the enemy tries to beat you down with depression and anxiety. And I hope that in that moment, you hear my voice in your head saying some of these things. Because what goes in your spirit, it's deposited there. And it'll come up when you need it. Let's talk, about, let's talk about some of this. The first thing we need to do is resist the devil. We gotta resist the devil. Joyce Meyer said, if you let the devil, no, if you don't let the devil impress you with what he does, then he can't oppress you. And if he can't oppress you, then he can't depress you. One of the most important things we can do is resist the devil at his onset. It's the enemy that's bringing these thoughts of depression. It's not God. It's not God. God died so you could live a life of abundance. He's given you joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The enemy wants to weaken you with depression so that you can't fight him, so that you don't feel like fighting him, so that you won't fight him. If you have no strength, you can lay your weapons down. And so he wants to steal your joy. He doesn't care so much about your car. He's not, he doesn't care so much about your tires. He doesn't even care so much about your money. What he wants to do is steal your joy and steal your peace. And depression and anxiety are two great ways. It's like a pop, pop, a one-two punch. Steal your joy, steal your peace. So you've got to resist the devil. First Peter, we're going to look at First Peter 5, verse 8 and 9 in the Amplified Bible. I'm teaching you today. Some of you need to take notes. 1 Peter 5 and 8 and 9, the Bible says, Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. Be vigilant and cautious at all times. Somebody say at all times. <laughs> For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Now that's the first step. In avoiding this trap of depression, in avoiding this trap of anxiety, is to be well balanced. We've got to stay in balance if you're eating too much, sleeping too much, not sleeping enough, not eating enough. All of these things are, are the, the devil's playground. Excesses are the devil's playground. And so we have to understand that, you know, you, you know when you get a little sad, you know, I don't know, we, we all grieve and we all have moments of disappointment. It's okay. You're a human being. You have emotions. You're going to be disappointed when you didn't get that job. You're going to be frustrated when that house didn't come through. It's okay to have the emotions. What it's not okay to do is sulk and dwell there in that feeling. See, because in verse 9, it says, withstand him. Who? The devil. Withstand him. Be firm in the faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians around the world. You've got to withstand him. The Bible says when you've done everything else, stand. You're going to stand rooted in the love of God. You're going to stand immovable. You're going to stand saying, God is holding me up. I will not fall. I will not back down. I'm coming after you, depression. You will not oppress me anymore. You will not keep me down and out. God is going to take me up and over. I will not be silenced. I will sing the praises of my God. You've got to resist him at the first inkling of his appearance. Don't wait until he, you know, squats in your house. He don't want to get out. One time I let somebody stay in a condo that I had and I had moved out and I was selling it and she didn't have no place to stay. And she said, I'll just, can I, can I stay in there? I said, okay, I'll let you stay. And guess what? When it was time to leave, she wouldn't get out. She was a squatter. And some of you have let the devil in your head. And now you're done playing patty cake with the devil, but he won't get out. He's squatting there. Do you hear me? You can't play patty cake with the devil. You cannot let him speak to your heart. You can't let him tell you, I'm depressed. I'm afraid. I'm anxious. You can't let him tell you these things. You got to stand up and say, no, I'm not. I've got the joy of the Lord. I've got peace that I will not let go. You're not going to rob from me, devil. You can go knock on my neighbor's door. They got some vulnerabilities, but I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I will say about myself what God has said about me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm joyful. You got to resist him at his onset. You got to be determined. 
Next thing you got to do is you got to cry out to God. Some of you, and if you've done this, don't get mad at me now, but I'm trying to help you. You got to stop putting all your troubles on Facebook, okay? I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Quit crying out to Facebook and keep start crying out to the Father. Amen? Hey guys, Jennifer LeClaire here. I'm coming to you with an exciting opportunity to partner with me as I advance the kingdom of God around the world. As many of you know, I am doing a daily prayer call that's reaching millions of people, millions and millions of people a year, but I'm also planting houses of prayers, prayer hubs, apostolic centers, and of course, raising up prophets and prophetic people. But I'm also sowing, sowing, sowing. Jennifer LeClaire Ministries sows back into at least 15 other ministries that are touching the sex trafficking industry. They're touching digging wells in Africa. They're helping uh, drug addicts rehabilitate and so, so much more. I need your partnership. When you partner with Jennifer LeClaire Ministries, whether you're in Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, here in the US, wherever you are in the world, you are helping to open a door for me to come to your nation. You are helping feed hungry people. You are helping the gospel be preached. You are helping media projects flow forth. You are helping, you are sowing, and you will reap a harvest. Listen, you cannot outgive God. I can't do what I do without faithful supporters like you. You know, Billy Graham used to say that the janitor who cleaned the bathrooms would receive the same reward as he did for standing on a platform and preaching the gospel. When you sow into our ministry, you receive a reward. I want to invite you to become an official partner. You'll receive a monthly partner resource, special seating at my events, and so much more. The most important thing is you're being partakers of advancing the kingdom of God, especially if you're a prophetic person, if you're mission-minded, if you're apostolically focused, support. So pray. Amen. God is good and he's doing so much more than any one of us can do alone, but together we can do a lot. We can make an impact. We can have influence on a lost and dying world. It's time. It's time to rise up and go further. I'm asking you, become a partner today.